No. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. No. I'm you not. learn a lot, and you've come really close. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, no, when, I, I don't think I would be able to adapt to that experience. But it shows also, you know, how flexible mm -hmm. you are in everything that you do, and I yeah. really admire that. I've seen you like, you know, I've seen you yeah. around. Hi, first of all, let me say that I'm very happy to have you here and to have met you here actually during the break in Cantabria where we have like all come together and <laughs> welcome to the good stories and welcome actually to the break series that we're doing and Tamitha Tiger, sorry, it's like we're editing this, we continue with Grace. So Tabitha Tungalini is actually putting out a project which is called Encoda Remote. And I wanted to have you, I you were actually like one of the people, one of the guests that I really, really wanted to have you in this podcast because you actually come from also a very, you have a very challenging path a very challenging journey yourself mm -hmm. and you are one of the hardest working people that mm -hmm. I've ever met in my life and I've met a lot of people in my life so far <laughs> and I really want to know you know mm -hmm. who you are what brought you here mm -hmm. and also all about your project as much as you can share of course <laughs> sounds fantastic so yes, I've had a very varied life. Um, it's quite funny because I tell people I've had like four different lives in one because I've done different uh, backgrounds. But I'm originally from the U.S. Um, I've been to all but eight states. The last place I moved from was California. Um, I did social work for a little bit of time. I worked in education. I had my own catering business. Wow. Um, I worked, as I said, for a teacher for about eight years, and then I went into the tech world on that. Oh my God. <laughs> for the business and sales side of it <laughs> on that. Okay. Um, and also done public speaking, and I did theater also. I traveled on the road, living out of a van for about three years, going from place to place to place. Fuck, that's so cool. Okay. It was fantastic, and it was definitely an experience, yeah. although it kind of gave me a little bit of a taste already of like, Lots of people living in one house with, although there are a lot more showers here. I remember I lived in a house. We were about 18 <laughs> girls when we come back to home base and there was only one bathroom. No. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. No, I'm you not. learn a lot and you've come really close. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, no, when, I, I don't think I would be able to adapt to that experience, but it shows also, you know, how flexible mm -hmm. you are in everything that you do. And I yeah. really admire that. I've seen you like, you know, I've seen you yeah. around. So there you go. So um, I was uh, working. Uh, I did my own catering business for mm -hmm. a period of time. So I ran it for about three years and I did for embassies mainly. Um, so did fusion cuisine. Their uh, cuisine mixed with a different one. Love doing it. Um, I kind of extant, expanded my project more than I probably should have or my business that I should have because I took on weddings and I got burned out. Okay. So from that... I stopped and said, okay, this is not continuing. This is not what. And so I went a few more projects. And then I also did my own uh, events where I brought people together. So the whole idea is for people to connect on a deeper level. So I did that a while. It was going great. I did cooking events. I did some singles events. And then the pandemic happened. Yes. Yes. And it's we not all really know happening. How, yeah, <laughs> we all know how this went. Basically. Yeah, I did, yes. a, I did a couple of events for companies online, like team events and whatnot, but I, the whole purpose was to be offline. And so I couldn't connect doing this online, even though the whole idea and the whole purpose behind the business had been doing it offline. So I stopped for a while and was working in company and was working remotely here and there. And that's actually Athens is where the idea for my Oh this my business came from. God, okay. Now <laughs> you have you have to tell me more. Okay. Um, so yes, I decided um work at that time, the company I was working was being very stressful. I decided I needed a break. At the time I was also living in a shared flat in Berlin, which is called a Vege. Um, and beforehand, me and my flatmate rarely saw each other. All of a sudden we were constantly in the flat with not much space and everything else. And I was like, I needed it. I was also visiting a friend that was in Athens, so I was like, okay. 
time to get away, be fine, whatnot. And I was like, you know, because I couldn't rent out my flat at the time. So it's like, okay, just make this work. You know, if, even if I come back and eat ramen, it's okay. Yeah. Um, cause I was like, son, great food. <laughs> and they call it perfect. And I actually reached out to the Airbnb host ahead of time. I was like, I really need a workspace and I really need internet. This is an absolute must. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. It's fine. It was not fine. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so one, their internet was on a completely different floor. So there was nothing I could do about it. Like I couldn't, like I wrote them several times, but I just feel bad. Like, can you turn it on and off? Like it's not working. I'm trying to work. And then their working space was in the one area of totally dead internet. So I was hunched over the kitchen table. I had a blue bowl that I had the computer on and I was working like this. So my back wasn't happy either. No, I can relate to that. Too much expenses then and massages probably. Oh, when I got back. Uh -huh. And then I was walking on the whole town trying to find a Wi-Fi extender, which in the end didn't even work. And so then I returned home and all my plants were dead. <laughs> oh, no. And I was like, um, because when you're full time on the road, it doesn't matter. You can go to co-living spaces, wherever, because you just go from place to place to place. You're quite flexible. But I was like, I like having a home. I like having having a base that I come back to. I like having my books out and I can uh, look at them when I want. But I also like the freedom of being able to go away for a month or a month and a half and really live in a city and get to know the feel of it. And so in Athens, I would go to the fish market and the vegetables a lot. And then I'd go to the ocean and there's, um, uh, you probably already know it, the lake there. I, yeah, I say like, it wrong. Like Vulagmeni. Exactly. Yeah. The little fishies that come yeah. and I would spend my time there. <laughs> And I love, like, it's like you're able to live like a local and get the feeling and really get to know the city and the people and you make friends at the same time. But at the same time, I get to go back to my base and my friends and everything else. And so I was like, there has to be a better way of doing this. And the other home swap uh, sites uh, were mainly for families, see where they weren't as flexible. They didn't have so much focus on working spaces and also I come back from the days of couch surfing. When I go to a city, I can meet up with people and have friends and all this kind of stuff. So I was like, okay. And that's where kind of Encoder Remote came. So a community um, platform for remote workers to home swap, but you can still connect with people. You can still meet up with people and you can still have like an actual space and someone else takes care of your apartment or your pets or your plants or all the different aspects. I think that is genius. And I'm like, it's, is it happening already in the market? Is it not mm -hmm. happening? Is it like, it's, mm -hmm. I think it's like something which is like basically a necessity mm -hmm. for, you know, the times that we're living in yeah. since people are traveling so much, since mm -hmm. you have like such a big digital nomad community out mm -hmm. there. Um, so people are looking in order to connect and kind of like not have borders. Yeah. So I was like, you know, this is like kind of like it should have been like established yesterday. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. Uh, so the idea of home swap has actually been around since the 1950s. If not I think earlier. There, sorry, there was a movie actually, if I yes. remember correctly. <laughs> Yes, with Cameron Diaz and Kate Blanchett. Kate, no, Kate no. Winslet. Kate Winslet. Kate so Winslet. the holiday. Yes. Yes. The holiday. Yes. Exactly. So the concept's been around for a while. It was originally with teachers would swap during their spring break or their summer vacation. And so, and probably about the same time that I've started, there's other like home swap platforms started for like for remote workers, but they're not so usually focused on community. Plus there are a lot of technical changes that I have ideas in the future about that don't exist right now as well that I want to also look at and actually because I want to make it easy and flexible to do it yeah because the whole point is like you don't want to take hours doing things or all this kind of time and when I go to a place I would love to know where to go like where are the best places to eat what is that to listen to I want to meet up with people and so these are all the things that um, right now I'm working on incorporating into it and so there are other home swap platforms like I said they're mainly focused on families. They don't always have the aspects like they don't have it all in kind of in one place. Like you'll have this one has a great um, for this area, but maybe not so much for Europe. You'll have one great for, um, let's say, looking at certain times of the year or they're great for finding um, what you call it cheaper uh, places to go or whatnot, but not or these you have a lot of um, nomad communities, but then you don't have this aspect. So it's kind of like. When I'm coming to a city, where should I go? And also we partner with co-working spaces that have their own communities. 
So it's like, oh, this co-working space has community lunches on this week, so I can go meet people that are local, make friends, even though if I decide to travel with one other person or by myself, I have that Or chance. with your dog or your pet or your Exactly. <laughs> if you want to take your plan along, I just gave clear instructions. <laughs> My plans stay home. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the idea and I find this idea like quite ingenious because um, we briefly talked about it the other day, but I, we didn't really like, mm -hmm. I didn't really go, we didn't really dive into it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's like something that should have existed yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's also flexible. It's like almost like, mm -hmm. you know, by default built on, you know, the needs of the person yeah. who needs to like swap and yeah. like go work somewhere else or like just have an experience somewhere else. Correct. Exactly, because you can also, because I, I, what I like about it is that you get to live like a local without making it hard for locals to live there. Because I live in Berlin, Germany, and to find an apartment long term is like people sell their firstborn child. Not really, but it's like that. Like you really go into it. Like people looking at the obituaries going, who's dying? What apartment can I have? <laughs> um, and so like, and well, the thing is, when someone lives long term, they're going to be giving back into the city. Because yeah. they're the ones that are going out, that are spending, that are doing all this thing that brings up the life of who they are as to someone that just short term. Yes. And so in that sense, like it's very sad if you have a whole area of the city that's just short term rentals because you're always having the aspects at the same time. I love to go and live in a city for a period of time and I'm more likely going to spend money on experiences and food which helps the city, but it's not going to be overrun with tourists. It's it's also people, when they stay longer, they're usually a little bit more thoughtful about their surroundings. They're a little bit more caring and a little bit more giving back into that way. And so at the same time, it's sustainable for the city. So yes. it's making it where people still live there long term. Other people get to visit. You get to spread. You get to have a great time. And at the same time, it's great also for the planet. I love your project. I love, you know, your story and I love that you have like come into my podcast and I really love, you know, the fact that we have managed to connect throughout this sort of experience because I believe that, you know, community yes. and co-working spaces and the way that people and we have seen this actually over here yeah. the way that we work together and we each and every one of us actually brings like their own skill set from their own country this yeah. is like this is invaluable literally yeah. so i will just say that i am wishing you all the luck in the world for your yeah. project i um i don't know like i'm wishing to the stars like so that you can make it like actually like viable as soon as possible yeah. so that i can actually like use it That's seriously yes Many people in athens right now <laughs> yes 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 by all means and anyway anyhow that athens and greece can support you you know <laughs> i'm very very happy that you came and mm -hmm. i really want to say that express my gratitude and wish you all the luck in the world thank you very much and oh. you as well oh. i'll be keeping an eye on your project okay.